Invest or Lose. In part two of the big startup show, four business newcomers are fighting for victory. How is the jury of experts going to decide this time? Welcome to Excite Part 2. Another four startups are trying to make their way into the 360 lab. Who's going to make it? We're going to see. The dream team from San Francisco is getting ready for the big performance. Hey guys, how are you doing? Very well, very well. Yeah? Yes. Do you feel well prepared? Very prepared and very hungry. I'm waiting for this. Hungry? Event. Yes, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's very much it. Yeah. It's not a good start for the presentation, so isn't it? Performance. Hungry for performance, yes, got it. Let's just hope there won't be any misunderstandings on stage. Reason one is uh, Satoshi Nakamoto was the uh, founder, uh, pseudonymous founder of Bitcoin. Um, and the second is that a Satoshi is also known as the smallest denomination of a Bitcoin, so it's a millionth of a Bitcoin. Uh, so I pretty much know the ins and outs of what needs to happen there. And especially what doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> More important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For example, uh, uh, the money disappearing. That is not supposed to happen. <laughs> do you have a good quote? Anna? Yes, I do. All right, let's go. Uh, plans are useless. Planning is invaluable. Good. <laughs> Hi guys, thanks so much for having us today. I'm Oliver and this is Gabriel and we're the two co-founders of Satoshi, um, a platform that allows you to invest um, your spare change into cryptocurrencies. What we came up with is a very easy to use solution that um, allows you to invest small amounts of um, money into cryptocurrencies directly from your daily purchases. So. The way it actually works in practice is that you'll download the app, you'll link your bank or your card, you will then go about your day and say you go to Starbucks and buy your morning coffee for three fifty. Uh, we'll round it up to the nearest dollar or euro to four dollars and automatically invest the difference um, into a managed portfolio of cryptocurrencies for you. So. The reason we're kind of doing this is also to, to break down that barrier and the perception of investment only being for people of, of wealth with considerable money in the bank account to do so with. We want to really democratize that, um, the whole concoction of, of investment into something that's, uh, that you can do even with, if you only have a few dollars and you've never invested before. So we are, um, we're live in the US currently and, and both in, across Google Play and Apple App Store. Um, and we're the first um, company dealing with cryptocurrencies to actually get the investment advisor license from the SEC. Um, competitors, um, there's a lot of people in the space enabling access, but we're the only one really taking it the full way and actually um, giving the, the full experience of holding the user's hand through the actual investment as well. From a team perspective, uh, we're based in San Francisco, California. Um, Gabriel and I are, um, we've both been in the blockchain space for about six years and Gabriel has uh, 15 years of um, development experience and myself, I've been in the fintech space for a while. Um, we're eight people all together and um, really what we're trying to do next is from 2019, we want to um, raise a seed round and move into the European market after we now have proved our concept over in the US. So Germany looks like a really good competitor for, for sort of our next market. Um, We've previously raised from seed funds over in the US and from angels and are looking to keep the momentum going. Thanks so much. That's it. Well, thank you very much. A short presentation. So I'm going to see what the questions are, Chris. I'm a huge fan of blockchain technology, but um, the cryptocurrency market at the moment is really hard. I would say hard at the moment. Tell me, how do you earn money? We have multiple sources of revenue. Uh, there is a 1% commission on deposit and withdrawal of dollar and euro. There's a 0% fee on uh, the, the actual management uh, of the cryptocurrencies. Uh, there's also a secondary revenue source. Because of the data that we hold and because of our license, we have access to consumer spending patterns, which can be monetized very easily. Uh, and also, um, Almost entirely, our users come through our referral network and through our reward uh, for partners referring. Uh, so we want to take that to the next level. We saw that it was pretty easy, and we want to take that to the next level. What worries me a little bit, you said, um, it can be considered and monetized. So it sounds to me a little bit you don't have like, the final plan how to... Uh, monetize it on the end? Uh, no, because actually that only matters from 50,000 users and upwards. 
uh, before that, uh, it doesn't really matter. You can't really monetize less than 50,000 users. The data we have available for just a few thousand users is not really you know, representative to be able to uh, make thematic analyses on spending patterns across larger, larger, larger cohorts. So, but it's, it's something that we're putting in place in our algorithm already to be able to sort of have the data flow in once, once we get reach user numbers that are large enough for that. I think one of you guys have been in, in Stanford, right? Who of you? Okay. And what about the rest of the team? Yeah. So I'm from Denmark originally, but have uh, spent about 10 years in, in the US and London. So I was, um, I was at Berkeley first, and I did my master's in London, um, worked a few years in fintech as a blockchain consultant um, a few years back, where I was sitting across the large European fintech uh, retail banks. So I was at Lloyd's, HSBC, um, and kind of advised them on their blockchain strategy in the future. Um, then did some more post-course work um, at Stanford, where it was about cryptography mainly, and um, then have been in the startup world ever since. This is my third startup, um, the second in the blockchain space. Um, Gabriel, yeah. yeah, do you want to give yourself? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, I've been a coder since, since I was 12, basically. Uh, I've been part of seven different startups so far. Um, also, I have patented a series of technologies for predictive analytics uh, in, in the US in 2015. Uh, and also, uh, I have worked in the fintech space as a consultant in London on multiple projects. That's exactly how we met. Yeah. What is your go-to-market strategy for Europe? Do you have already one? We haven't really planned yet because the compliancy, uh, that's a big chunk of work. Uh, so after that, there are certainly... Because the whole goal, being a young industry, we don't want to go after the early adopters, which are already in the space and have already... We want to go for everybody else because the whole USP is around simplicity. Are you trying to get an uh, exchange as well or not? Um, no, that's not currently a target, um, but we want to expand the portfolio to, to the point where um, you know, we're managing a large, a large proportion of the coins available um, and, and currently sort of um, popular. So thank you very much. That's it for Achuri. I have a look into the... Yeah, please. One question from the council. Um, as you said before, you're a wealth manager. Um, you would have less risk maybe if you allow also that I can choose, okay, I like the crypto market. So I want to invest in crypto, but maybe also in gold. Yeah, the problem with, uh, with uh, traditional ETF stocks, gold uh, commodities, is that when ov over the period of a year, a user roughly puts in around $500. And when you compound that against the growth of gold, you're going to win $6.1. That's not very attractive. If you add that to taxes, that's certainly not attractive at all. OK, thank you. There's one from the, from the audience. Okay. Is it necessary using specific credit cards? Um, in the US currently, um, it doesn't matter. We are, we've partnered up with our payment provider, which has access to over um, 145 uh, banks and credit institutions in the US. So that pretty much covers um, most, most of the cards you could have, um, unless you have some small, small local bank in Kentucky. Um, so you say, thank you, Satoshi, and good luck. Thank, thank you. you. From the two Americans by choice to Great Britain. Russell clearly has his very own relaxation techniques. Is this what you normally do before a performance? Always. Um, I used to play at Wembley Arena in front of 100,000 and always yoga before the performance. Always. Wusa. It helps you relax. Sometimes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next startup from Great Britain. Touch. Whether his experience will help the Brit during the pitch, we'll see. I spent a lot of time working abroad, and uh, when I was calling people back home, uh, a lot of my family would reach towards the screen on a mobile phone to try and touch me. This doesn't work when you use the front-facing camera of a smartphone, um, and after some thought, I came up with the idea of utilizing the rear-facing camera on a smartphone. My girlfriend is a stewardess and I video call with her quite a lot, as she's often around the world. Touch has the potential to be a new video calling platform on the same level as Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. And it, it really can scale. I travel a lot, and like most people, I use video calling to keep in touch with my family and friends back home. A couple of years ago, I was living in the Middle East. I'd just grown this beard, and I was calling home to show my family. 
My young niece, Amy, as soon as she saw the beard, she burst into laughter. And instinctively, she reached out and tried to touch my beard on the screen of the smartphone. But there was a problem. This doesn't work at all. And all I can see is an enlarged version of Amy's finger covering the front-facing camera of a smartphone. This was the eureka moment, and the second that the idea for touch was formed. Touch is a new mobile video calling app that allows users to reach out and touch the person they're calling. We've created a technology that utilizes the video feed from the rear-facing camera of a smartphone. Our technology works by using computer vision to identify and extract a human hand in real time. This creates an experience that is far more immersive than a traditional video call. You can high-five with your friend, or you can share a beer with your buddy that's located on the other side of the world. I want to talk to you a little bit about Touch's IP. We already have an impressive patent portfolio, with four patents granted in the USA and a number of patents pending across Asia and Europe. We also have a world-class team working on Touch. Banuba, our technical partner, are a market-leading computer vision company and specialize in background separation and augmented reality technology. Patrick Richards is a prominent IP lawyer and sits on the board of several established tech companies in the USA. Myself, I'm a UK inventor and entrepreneur and Touch is the second technology company that I've founded to date. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Let's find out if the jury likes your app. It's, it's a nice um, gimmick. It's, you know, uh, it kind of, um, mm, I can spend my time, you know, for a couple of minutes with it. But, uh, I mean, like, what is your long-term vision on that? Firstly, um, Touch is billing itself as the next generation of video calling. It's adding an extra dimension to your video call. So you can still have a traditional video call, but you always have this dimension to enter your hand into the video call. So we, we see it as a standard. We're very confident that Touch is going to be a mainstream video calling feature, either in a standalone Touch app, or Touch's technology is going to be integrated into existing mobile video calling platforms, such as Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, WhatsApp, etc. What is the business model behind it? Um, and how you want to earn money with this app? So there's, uh, there's two main ways that Touch can commercialize its technology. Um, Firstly, as we mentioned, through licensing the technology to existing mobile video calling platforms. And we also have quite an interesting second revenue stream, which is via sponsored advertised AR filters. Uh, you might have noticed on some of the slides, there was, uh, there was one with a Coke bottle and another one with a Heineken bottle. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that businesses would buy sponsored filters within the app to advertise their products. You mentioned before you have four patents in, in the States. Can you give more details about these patents? Um, the patents are very broad. Uh, it's the entire concept of taking a human element, whether it be a hand, a foot, a head, from the rear-facing camera and superimposing that into a video call in real time. The, the patents are so broad, in fact, um, that the IP lawyer that originally started to draft the patents for us in the US is that impressed with the technology that he has now actually become a part of the business, as he also feels <laughs> that this is a fairly broad ranging scope. What do you think about um, Asia as a market? Because I think, like, um, from my understanding, like, all these this filters and stickers and everything, um, you know, similar to that, is a huge, huge potential in Asia because they, you know, pay really a lot of money, tons of money, basically, to, to use any kind of filters and stickers. Exactly. This is a multi-billion dollar industry in Asia. Um, whereas we're trying to offer this service free to consumers, um, we feel that the revenue potential through advertising the sponsored filters within this fun sponsored filters, you saw there, there were some drinks brands, you could also use clothing brands, food, you could pass people food. Um, the limits are endless, really, of the, the different augmented reality filters that you could use. This is an amazing, amazing thing. Thank you very much. Really cool. I don't know if you know, we're doing also a bit in um, <clears throat> um, communication with iTime. And uh, of course, 
this technology fits perfect in, but uh, of course it should not fit only in, in, in that kind of business, so in all the businesses, because I see a lot of potential in, in marketing, in uh, building social groups. I like it. It's really, really great. That's super. And uh, yes, I, I am aware of iTime, and I think that this will be a great, certainly a testing market for Touch to, we use iTime. Absolutely. Um, we can test that against some of the great markets that you guys have got, and, and this should really help us get an excellent market fit for the product when it does launch. If uh, Hubert says it's amazing, it's not the worst sign, I can tell you. <laughs> not the worst sign. Well, so we have um, a question from the audience, Russell. Is it planned to use it for desktop users, for example, for programs like Skype? The, the main implication of this is on mobile, because you need to reach behind the phone and capture your hand. Um, but if you have one mobile caller against one desktop caller, it can also work. So if I, if I call somebody who's using Skype on a desktop, um, I can reach behind my phone, but they're going to find it a little trickier to reach behind their desktop monitor. So, uh, so at least one of the callers has to be using a mobile device for it to, to work. Okay, thank you very much. This is your applause. All this applause seems to make the next candidate from China a little bit nervous. Just a short question, what is running through your head right now? Yeah, n I don't know, just um, it's, it's a little bit blank at the moment, um, trying to keep myself calm. Um, so uh, hopefully we're going to perform, so see how it goes. But um, yeah, it's just a little bit nervous with the waiting time and everything. Please give it up for our next startup, international one from Helsinki, London and Hong Kong, Kwan. While the one still has to prove himself, the other one can do his happy dance backstage. This is what somebody looks like who is satisfied with his performance. The founder really spoke in high terms of you. It was great praise to hear such nice words from the founder of my world. Um, yeah, I'm glad that it got such a good reception. And the other questions of the jury um, and, and the council, did you find them very tricky or was it easy for you to answer them? Uh, I think a couple of the questions were tricky, but uh, I think the answers convinced the audience and the panel, so I'm quite pleased of how it went. And this has to be celebrated with a beer. I, um, I, I you know, before you know, I come up, come to the show, I will probably talk to myself in the mirror for a couple of times. So our vision, our goal, ultimately, is not only to help uh, the Chinese sellers, but also to help all the um, sellers all over the world to, um, to get a cheaper and faster uh, you know, international transfer. Uh, when I get asked a lot of questions, um, you know, I tend to um, you know, have a lot of things in my mind. So I will try to construct them um, in, in a way that people are able to understand and you know, try to be creative so that um, you know, people actually pay attention to me and, and, and get, the, get the right focus. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Have you ever made an international money transfer before? And if so, are you fed up with the high fees that the banks are charging you? If that's the case, then you are in the right place today. We are Quan, a cross-border payment platform backed by blockchain technology for e-business to send and receive their money overseas for as little as one working day. This is where Quan comes in. By using blockchain uh, technology, we are able to um, enable the payment infrastructure clearing, settlement, and also real-time anti-money laundering instantly. As a result, it is 10 times cheaper and two times faster. This is a typical payment flow for a Chinese sellers selling to Amazon EU. Amazon EU will firstly send the funds to Quan in euros, who then converts into Chinese yuan and send it back to the Chinese users in two working days. Quan supports 53 global currencies and reaches out to 150 countries uh, from the European Union and Hong Kong. Quan is the only company that are offering FX and payment solution using blockchain technology. And it is, uh, we are the only one that are using uh, invoices counting companies for the express one day payment. To date, we have processed 15 million US dollars payment transfer. We have obtained our license in EU, we have obtained our license in Hong Kong, and we are currently working on our license in the US. In terms of projection volume of payment process, uh, we have reached 5 billion and our revenue model is one. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.
Thank you, Che. I'm sure they're going to ask some questions. I'm pretty sure. Chris, please. The, the problem you try to solve is, is quite um, difficult to, to understand and, and to combine it in, in a pitch of uh, three minutes, but I think you have did a pretty, pretty good job. Thank you. But like, really, if you break it down to one sentence, what is the, the, the problem you solve and who is your, your main audience? So our main audience will be for the Chinese e-commerce merchants. And uh, at the moment, they are suffering from very long credit terms from the big e-commerce e platforms such as Amazon. They are giving you know, 60 days, 90 days payment terms to those sellers, which is really suffering in terms of their uh, cash flow and time. So with us, we are able to provide them with a uh, payment within you know, two, three working days. Any plans to maybe also step out of the Asian market? Yes, definitely. So uh, what happens is, uh, EU is definitely the biggest market for us, uh, together with uh, US. And we have already a payment license in the EU, and we are in the, in the process of applying for a US license. Your business model is based on the, on the time what uh, the merchants save uh, to get their money, right? Uh, yes, that's, that's correct. So in terms of time and value, if they want to get their money early, then they, it comes with a premium. Um, and we usually charge 1% uh, commission fee um, for, for a normal transfer. But if they want a faster, for example, a premium one working day uh, transfer, we also work with the invoice discounting company to enable that as well. So e-money license, what you're working on, what do you have? Uh, for the US, yes. Um, we currently have um, two licenses. Uh, one is the payment institution license in EU, and the other one is the money service business operator in Hong Kong. So, thank you very much. The council, it's your turn now, please. What are your plans for your future growth? Are you thinking about using own data centers or working with cloud infrastructure? Thank you very much. Uh, so we are aiming uh, to build our own system uh, in, the, in the very future. But uh, like I said, by 20, um, 2022, we are hoping to pr uh, process uh, 5 billion euros. And we are, will be charging a commission fee for that. Um, and in order to complete our whole um, blockchain and AI ecosystem, we will definitely need, uh, need a bit more technical help with that. Uh, for now, for the first two, one or two years or so, once we are expanding to the US, firstly, we would need um, a lot of headcounts for payment processing. Another one will be for technical help. And uh, if we do want to expand the, um, the, the units further, then I, I potentially, you know, we would definitely require technical support from uh, elsewhere as well. Thank you, Che. Thank you. And now, please welcome from Austria, our next startup. So, any famous last words before going on stage? Ah, what could possibly go wrong? Everything. <laughs> no, that's the last words. <laughs> famous last words. So, I hope you have already prayed to God. If not, last chance now. Uh, not praying to God. Thanking my mother. We really want to change the way online betting works. <laughs> my favorite online game is StarCraft. Two and StarCraft One as well. Uh, it inspired me already when I was a kid. For me, it's definitely Dota Two. Um, it's the game where I started or I came in contact with esports the first time. Um, for me, as a technician, my biggest dream is always that what I have built is used by as many people as possible. For me, it's just to 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 do my own thing, having an idea and following it through till the end. Hey, I'm Paul, and when I was a child, like 10, 12 years old, I loved playing computer games. <laughs> Nobody knew back then that computer gaming would turn into a billion dollar market. But that's where we are now. It's called eSports. eSports looks like this. It's five computers on the one hand side, five computers on the other side of the stage, two teams playing against each other, and in the middle there's a big screen. Online, more than 200 million people are watching that Life. Next year, it will already overtake community wise American football. Okay, sounds like a cool market, but what are we doing? You know, where people watch sports, they also want to bet on it. And we give a new alternative for betting. What's wrong with traditional online betting? We think it's quite disappointing because I, as a sports fan, 
have to bet against the bookie, which is a professional. And if I bet like eight to 10 times statistically, all my money will be gone from my pocket to the bookmaker. So we provide a solution for that. It's community betting. Well, I can bet, for example, the jury or everybody in the room. Okay, sounds like a cool idea. Community betting, esports, but does it work? Yes, it works. We have already more than 250,000 people on our platform and they placed more than 1.7 million bets already. And the problem is with esports betting, those guys got scammed a lot, which meant uh, dirty sites, dragging away the money, never pay out. That's why we now uh, did the next step and bringing our product on the blockchain uh, to provide maximum trust through security and transparency. Um, we have a very ambitious, highly motivated team. In the middle, you can see the three founders. Uh, Philip, our CTO, is also here today. And yeah, we also have great investors. For example, uh, Michael Altrichter, which is quite well known in Austria. On the other hand, we have Hubertus Stonehauser. He was the former CEO of Casinos Austria International. So next year for us, the product is out and next year will be about scaling, about growing, and therefore we need a strong partner and a good network. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to the questions. Thank you, Paul. Now let's find out if the jury would bet on your startup. Please <laughs> ask your questions. So um, I'm, I'm not a, the expert in that, but you definitely um, raised my interest on that topic because the market is so huge and the potential is great on that. Um, so but just to understand a little bit more the relevance um, about the, the blockchain uh, technology with, together with your business, can you go here a little bit more into the detail? And Let me give you an example. Like um, Esports is fast growing and also there happened a lot of betting action already on esports. But the problem was half a billion was in cash, half a billion. Seven billion, so I don't know, more than 10 times that amount, was in in-game items. What is an in-game item? For example, in Counter-Strike, you can buy a weapon. The normal traditional weapon is black, it's for free. But if you want to have a weapon that is pink, for example, you pay, I don't know, two dollars or five hundred dollars. And people start actually betting with that. And the problem was most of them have been scams. So the esports guys got scammed a lot. They lost the money, they never received the payout, and that's why blockchain is so important. On which uh, legal base do you work for, for the betting? Um, in Europe it's not that easy, no? No, it's a heavy regulated market. It's uh, different in basically every country in the European Union. Even in Austria you have like nine different betting licenses. So every, like, uh, it's typical for Austria, I would say. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, we are not considered like traditional betting, and uh, it's a game of skill, because I told you it's like a community element in it, and it's not like odd-based. So in our system, it's more like poker. You have a buy-in, you set up your team. We've, I explained it with soccer. You can choose, for example, Ronaldo and Messi in the same team. That's my choice. Those guys, if they in the real life score a goal, I receive mm. points. Okay. So... Can, you, can we you know, get a little bit more information about you as a team? Yeah, it's, it's two-sided. Like, I think we really have a highly motivated team, and that's for sure, and it's a really awesome dudes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the point is like we have people in the team that have been already active in the, in the blockchain industry, and back then it was basically the Bitcoin industry, in 2011. One of our team was founding member of, of Blockchain Austria. Um, one of them programmed the Mycelium wallet, one of the first wallets ever for Bitcoin in 2012 already. We have a um, German championship winner of Counter-Strike in our team. So this is really, it's really unique. Um. Is there any gamer in the council? One wants to ask a question, please, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, we have a great team, a good technology and a great understanding of, the, of your market and a great expertise in there with strong partners. What are your hopes and expectations for the Accelerator program? Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, next year is about scaling. As Chris said, it's a nice opportunity. For, I think the opportunity is there for one or two years. There you need to establish a, a cool system. Otherwise, anybody else will do it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. So that's it for now. We had 
four fantastic startups. I could not decide, but it's not my job to do. It's the job of the jury. They have to make the decision. We're going to find out whom they're going to take into the 360 lab and how many of the startups we're going to know pretty soon. And now also the final candidate for today is done. Do you think uh, your colleague did a great job on stage? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not easy to explain all the topics which are involved in our company. And he had only three minutes left, so um, it's hard to explain everything there. But I think he did a great job there and also the jury showed interest into the project. So. Quite nice. For good ideas and the pleasant personalities belonging to it are giving the experts a hard time to decide. It's quite interesting, okay? Oh. There are so many Ladies interesting and characters and so on. And uh, I did not really realize when we set up this project that uh, there will be so much uh, competitive companies, okay? It's really difficult to decide which are the best ones. It's Decision time number two. We still have three tickets to give away for the 360 lab. Who is going to succeed? All right, so congratulations to Touch, Kuan and HeroCoin. All three. Wow. Congratulations, guys. Three. Three out of four. That's unbelievable. Please come to me. Yeah, take a deep breath. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Those three join the top five. And now we've got a problem. I mean, I wasn't always really good in maths. But didn't we say we'd take five into the lab and now we have two shows and one show going on, so, and for startups we have no place anymore, Chris. Exactly, um, because of the very, very, you know, overperforming of these startups um, and the high quality we had, we decided to take a sixth one oh. into the 360 Lab Accelerator. Wow! <laughs> My dear! This is going to be a real final. It's the last chance to get one ticket to the 360 lab. This was Excite part two. Our startups have one last chance to make it into the 360 lab. Our great final coming soon.